We're going to look at taking the engine out of your Volkswagen. In this instance, it's a late model 1200, but the process is almost identical whether you have a split screen van, a bay window, an oval beetle, all the processes are exactly the same. It's just a few little things that change through the years. Now you may be taking the engine out because it's blown up, or as in this case, to change the flywheel oil seal and the clutch. When the uh, oil seal went, the clutch started spinning. It's very straightforward and the first thing you need to do is jack up the vehicle so that it's safe and secure. If you don't know how to do that, then have a look at one of the other how-to videos and uh, then we can proceed. We're going to have a look at the tools that we need for the job. So a selection of tools from our basic toolkit. Hammer, mold grips, pliers because they're always useful to have. Cross head or a Phillips screwdriver and a flat blade for various parts of the engine tinware and then an 8mm spanner, that's a small one, it's important because you use that on the throttle cable barrel clamp and for the heater cable barrel clamps, and then 10, 13, 17mm spanners for the various nuts and bolts you'll come across. Finally, a long extension and maybe a couple of extra ones so that you can get to the top and difficult to get to engine bolts that are on over the gearbox and whichever ratchet system you want to use along with a 13, a 17 and a 10mm socket just in case. Well, taking your engine out may seem like a daunting task, but it's actually relatively straightforward. As long as you do things logically and in small stages, and most importantly, safely, you'll have achieved something really good. Before we proceed with taking off the engine ancillaries and preparing the engine ready to drop it out, we must remember safety. So double check your axle stands, make sure the vehicle's secure, and then disconnect the battery. Now, you will find it underneath the rear seat. It's a case of just grabbing hold of it, giving it a pull, and uh, this one has got some accessory seat belts on it, which uh, may cause a problem. First off, we can see there's uh, not a standard fitting, but it's a good idea, a piece of cardboard here. And it's designed to stop anybody sitting on the seat and their weight coming down. And the metal springs here shorten across the top of the batteries. Um, I would suggest an old car mat being good on there. Now, the next thing to bear in mind is which order to take the positive and negative off with and we have a little earth lead here which we can pull off out of the way and it's important to take the negative off first because if we were to touch any part of the metal bodywork of the car we're working on the earth and we won't get a spark across so we can take that off and then just so the whole system's totally isolated it's safe now to take the positive side off now if you went for the positive first we're working near this piece of metal here, it will spark across the spanner. Uh, it's quite an alarming experience, so always remember, take the negative or the earth off first, and then the positive. In order to take the engine out, we need to take off the engine ancillaries, and there are a few interconnecting pieces of uh, pipework and electrics as well. We'll start off by taking off the air filter. Yours may look slightly different, but they all come off the same way. And likewise, the carburetor connecting linkage here on the throttle cable. We will need to take away your air hosing. Again, it might vary slightly model to model, but it's exactly the same thing. And finally, any of the engine tinware that is sealing off the engine from the rest of the bodywork. Well, we'll start off with some easy work. We'll take off the air filter and the air hoses that power up the heating system. We can do that with screwdrivers. Well, this looks like an earlier oil filled air filter but you just literally need to undo that clamp it may just not even be done up at all and you'll usually have some kind of an air hose coming off here which is actually for the crankcase pressure so that any misting in the engine case goes back down through the carburetor and a preheat pipe just here which stops carburetor icing and it's just literally a case of pulling them out taking it off well, it's so long since I've seen one of these little flaps on here. Um, it is actually part of the heating system. It's connected to it. And again, it's to stop the engine icing up when you first started up on a cold morning. So we'll just need to uh, disconnect that cable. And this will be the quickest way of doing it. You just undo this screw here. Disconnect it from the flap on the end here. And withdraw it. And just bear in mind, if you have got an early one that isn't a paper-filled one, there will be oil in there, so make sure you don't spill it all over. Okay, so we've just removed the air filter from the top of the carburetor, and we look for the spring and the operating lever on the side. We're looking for the 8mm 
little bolt down here which actually holds the accelerator cable into place and uh, there are various ways you can do it but when we're undoing you need to hold on to that now if you're not strong enough you can always put a pair of pliers on there and then just literally undo it well as with all the parts and the nuts and bolts that we'll be taking off make sure you put the barrel clamp somewhere very safe where you're going to find them again preferably one of the little magnetic dishes Next we need to take off the air hosing, that's what powers up your heating system and usually a sharp pull, a little bit of a twist, they'll come off and the same again for the bottom. Now these are getting slightly ropey but we would easily be able to reuse them if not just buy new ones in, they're not expensive. Well JK sell this heating hose in a length that's long enough so you can do all three. Next off we're going to take off the small pieces of tinware that are enclosing the preheat on the inlet manifold and these can be a bit of a fiddle and there's a chance that it won't even be there. Well they're just three ordinary screws again put them somewhere safe. Now the preheat tube does two things firstly it puts warm air up onto the inlet manifold to stop it icing up on cold and damp days and secondly it actually gives some support to the inlet manifold and depending on the year and the model, the engine size, it will vary slightly, but they're all pretty much doing the same job. Depending on how long these have been in place, you may need to prise them up. They can be quite stuck and stubborn, and also a bit of a fiddle. But don't force it, take your time, and just give it a little bit of a wiggle, and it will come out. And if that's really old, that might well be some kind of asbestos. Treat it with care quick wiggle and lift it out. Finally we have to take out the little M6 retaining grub screws that hold the front pulley in place and you'll find them scattered around again model to model but it's very obvious which ones you need to take out. With the final retaining screws out we should in theory just be able to lift it out as long as it's not had a crash at the back or anything being totally rusted in and there it is. And the idea is that this seals up against the rubber seal to keep all the heat underneath the engine. Put that somewhere safe and now we can move on to the last part of the disconnections which are the electrical loom and the fuel system. A couple of points to remember when taking the various parts of the electrical system off. If you're not familiar with it then by all means use a piece of masking tape, write something down onto it or even do yourself a little sketch so that you know they go back together again. And of course you can always take a picture with a mobile phone, digital camera or whatever for reference later. And please, please make sure that you have already disconnected the battery. Now this happens to be an alternator model and uh, it's one of the ones with the multi-point connectors in. So that's fairly foolproof, you can just gently wiggle it off. Now if you had a dynamo you'd have a DF and a D plus and it's fairly obvious with those that you can't get them confused. One should have a spade connector going in, the other's got a ring connector and you'll have a little earth one around the back. Um, but they will basically have little 8 mil securing nuts. A good idea to hold the back of the wire there just so that you don't spin the post and break the connection internally which would cause a bit of a problem. And another one of those fiddly little nuts, the best thing to do with these ones is probably to put them straight back down as soon as you've removed the wire. Okay, next we can disconnect the 12 volt supply to the automatic choke. And this one does seem to be quite stiff, but that can come off. Next off, we need to disconnect the 12 volt supply to the electronic fuel shutoff, which stops the engine carrying on once you've turned off the ignition. So it's just another little spade connector that we need to pull off there. We then have to take off the oil pressure switch, which is usually hiding down here behind the distributor, but again, just a straight spade connector. So the last thing to do before we physically remove the loom from the engine itself is to disconnect the positive that comes onto the coil, that's the 12 volt supply, and then the feedback into the loom from the negative side. And just so that you know about that one, it's the same side that goes down to the distributor and then we can just lift these free, make sure they won't get trapped up on anything. And the loom itself is usually just clamped against the fan housing, 
just with one of these tabs. Just ease them apart because otherwise they might snap off and they are quite useful. And then we can literally just feed that through and lay those to one side. Now if you hadn't disconnected your battery, you might have some large sparks at this point. <laughs>